Hey everybody! Welcome to another amazing FPP Live. We have an awesome guest tonight, Sienna Liggins, and she should be here shortly. Um, and I'm so excited. Hey Dylan, thanks for stopping by. Hey Annie. <clears throat> I um, hope everyone's doing well. We have a really awesome workshop next week, or tomorrow, <laughs> um, that is basically an open mic, a song share. Uh, so bring any art you have if you are an LGBT young person that has something you want to say. Um, we can workshop it. We can just give you some support. Oh my God, yay! Thank you for signing up, Dylan. We'll see you there. <laughs> hey, Cynthia. I love your Instagram icon. Love it, love it. And I wanna encourage folks that are here to utilize the question feature. So I think on this bottom bar here, you can click and ask a question. Hey Celeste, thanks for the kiss emojis. You can ask a question of our guest. And once the conversation's flowing, I'm sure you'll have a question you would like to ask. Hey, F Ness. I don't know if that's how you like your username pronounced, but that's how we're doing it today, honey. Hope everyone's doing well. I'm like having a bad hair day, even though I washed my hair today. Just keeping it real with you all. Just keeping it real while we wait for our guest. Hope everyone is staying cool in the summer humidity that is approaching. Actually, it was kind of cold out today. I wore shorts, kind of a silly move. Um, for those watching and don't know who we are, we are an arts organization. We're called the Future Perfect Project, and we provide free arts workshops to queer youth, which is a beautiful, amazing thing. I feel lucky we were able to do. So if you are a queer young person, or if you know one, send them our way, come our way, because we have a beautiful little community here that's only growing bigger and bigger. And we have a really incredible summer coming up that I will talk about later because Sienna just got here. An icon has arrived. An icon has arrived. Sienna, I think you need to request me to join. Yes, 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 yes. Hey! Hi, what's up? Not much, good to see you, how have you been? Good to see you too, I've been pretty good. How have you been? Pretty good, congrats on the new album. Thank you. It sounds and looks amazing because it's a visual album, which yeah. is iconic. You, uh, you've listened to it? Yeah, I need to listen again, but yeah, I've listened. Nice. And do you have a favorite or did you have one that stood out? Oh my God, I can't pick because it feels like a movie. Like, it feels like they really all belong together. Like I, It was I, a little bit of a movie, yeah. It does feel like <laughs> a movie. I want to I talk about that. I love them all. I'm trying to get, like, the right angle here. Oh my god. My brother's gonna walk by at any point and you don't wanna see that. <laughs> um, thank you so much for making time for us today and stopping by and of course. Uh, I'm excited to talk about you and your art. Um, but to start off, I mean you've done a workshop with us before, so you know this, but I thought we could do intros kind of like the way we did when you came <clears> to our <throat> workshop. Yeah, I don't remember what I said then, but I'll introduce I'll myself. I will demonstrate if that's cool. Okay, fire. Uh, so I'm Emma and she's feeling grateful in Brooklyn, New York. Got it. I'm Sienna and I am feeling cozy in Atlanta. Nice. And then what pronouns do you use? My pronouns are she, her. Awesome. Sometimes they, them, but I prefer she, her. Cool. I'm in that same boat. I'm like, we... Both are great. Love yeah, exactly. She. Love she. I wouldn't be mad at any of them. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I wouldn't be mad. So what does queer <laughs> mean to you? Just jump into it. You just released a very weird piece of art, in my opinion. 
my ring light is I just unplugged it with my foot. Oh my god. No, I love I love the drama. I love the drama. <laughs> it's because my house has no like we it's a hundred years old and it has no uh windows. So I have to have lights on. But will you repeat the question, Emma? Yeah, of course. Um I'm wondering what queer you as a person, as an artist? Sure. I think as a person, queerness just means other than straight and cis. Yeah. Um, and so it's kind of just like all of the things that aren't, I guess, what would make you normal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and I think within music and my artistry, um, being queer for me means that I get to make music for and about other queer people. And so it is a really cool space to live within um, to make music that isn't catered towards, again, cis straight people, which the majority of things are. Yeah. What track do you think, <clears throat> and if you haven't already, check out Sienna's new record. And it's a movie, too. I keep saying it's a movie because it's, it's a visual. visual. It's a visual album, yeah. I made a video for each song. So every piece of the album has its own visual accompaniment. Which is, like, so... It's so awesome to be able to see the music in that way. How do I, you... Yeah, how did you decide to do that? How do you infuse yourself and your queerness into the art you make? Sure. Um, so I'm a huge Beyonce fan. Um, I think she's a boss. I think she's, like, one of the best like representations of woman um just in terms of like her owning her career and her family life and like just giving a hundred percent to all of them and i obviously am a huge stan of lemonade and self-titled and black is king as well and i've always wanted to make i, I love making visuals like i do my own treatments i make my own um sort of like vision boards and I storyboard everything and I was making this album and I was like uh all of them are singles like I can't pick one that I want to focus on the most and I was, I was like they all could go like they could all bang on their own <laughs> and I was like I'm probably never gonna have another pandemic hopefully fingers <laughs> crossed <laughs> this was at the beginning of pan of the pandemic and like of lockdown when I was like very hopeful um, and I was like, I probably won't get another opportunity where I'll have all this time to like make stuff and it probably won't be this cheap ever again either because everybody, you know, all of the studios and um, production houses like weren't having clients. And so I was like, I'm going to make a full album visual. And my friends and I, I came to them with the idea and they were like, we're in. And I was like, really? <laughs> I was like, this is nuts, and we have no budget. <laughs> wow, I mean, it really doesn't look like you have no budget. And it's such incredible representation. Like, watching it, I was like, this is so gay, <laughs> this is so black, this is so Sienna. Yeah. Um, shout out for the four people on here to Amazon Returns, um, <laughs> which oh my God. favors, call in favors and return items, <laughs> um, which, like, it's kind of like, eh, it was a weird space to live in, but I'm also like, I don't need a three-foot disco ball in my house. Um, right. Maybe. So, yeah. No, it can't fit. We already okay. have a two-foot disco ball. Right. Of course. Yeah. But no. it is. It's very much me. It's queer. It's black. It's woman. It's gay. Like, it's lesbian. It's pop. It's catchy. It's sometimes a bit in your face, sometimes a bit uh, kitschy and kind of annoying and I think that all of those things are me that's awesome I wouldn't describe you as annoying but I'd say like definitely kitschy like definitely like the green morph suits and that one visual with the wigs and the banana suit I all that stuff I'm banana just like lean into it I'm a bit of a dork I love to have fun I um I'm a big kid like I love cartoons um if you notice like for beach butts we did this full like ode to Rugrats um, and ode to Susie Carmichael and like uh, Kay Kuypers turned me into Susie Carmichael and I was so fire. And um, it was just like, I wanted it to feel very much like a dream of mine, which this has been a dream of mine since I was like 10, 11 years old. 
Totally. So for queer young people that are watching and want to be want to wear that banana suit, but are too scared and are like kind of scared to be themselves. Like, I'm interested to know how you got there. How did you get to a place where you're like, I'm being me 100%? Um, I'm very lucky. Uh, I have a pretty supportive family who's all hi, Mark. Um, hi, Ola. I've always been very championed in my family to be myself even before I knew I was gay before I had even accepted that or really realized it um, because again in my mind growing up I'd never thought I was gay because I thought I was quote-unquote normal like I you know had gay friends who I was like their experience seems to be different than mine like you know my friend Dakota didn't have the relationship with his dad that I had you know with my dad and it hadn't even clicked for me growing up that like, it's really just about like who I want to make out with. But um, <laughs> I was very lucky to have such a strong support system. Um, and I think that that really like laid the foundation and knowing that not everybody has that. Um, that's kind of a reason of why am, I have like made a, it my mission to do what I'm doing to be as outspoken about it. Because I think that one of the things I did lack that would have helped me realize sooner that I was gay is if I had gay role models, um, right. specifically within music. And I think that um, I made the album for people like me and I made it in hopes that people would understand and take away this notion or idea that if you aren't you know, being exactly who you wanna be, if you don't really push yourself to be as authentic as possible, then you end up missing out on on life. And that's the whole double entendre. That's the whole, you know, album title is Miss Out Tonight. And it's really about just like being your full self and having fun with it. Yeah, which is so beautiful. What do you think is like the queerest song on the record? Ooh, there's so many directions I could go, right? Like probably the most like, just in your face like this is definitely about gay sex is either flower bomb or first time or maybe dirty girl i don't know it's called dirty girl so probably dirty girl takes the cake um but i think the queerest one where it's like oh my god this is such a queer kid anthem would be beach butts because it's titled beach butts it reminds me of just like rainbows and like unicorns and it's about the gayest thing that I've experienced to date, at least for lesbians. It's about long distance relationships because it's <laughs> so hard to find a girl in your city, you know, I mean, after you've like had your first love and then you realize that she's best friends with like three people who are also your exes. And then like you end up doing this thing where you meet somebody on Instagram or Twitter or wherever. And then you guys have this weird like back and forth of where it's like I'm flying to your city or, <laughs> or I'm gonna do pride in your city and yeah I wrote beach butts about that very real experience for me yeah and Everybody I think says blush is the gayest I can see that too we'll do like a bracket like almost like you know yeah I'm sure we've got a connection somewhere yeah <laughs> <laughs> I love it um yeah, I just love that you're, you do have songs about queer sex, but you also have songs about just queer experience, which is so important. In my opinion, I just feel like queerness often is sexualized because it is about, mm -hmm. like you said, who you make out with and who you sleep with. And so um, I really admire that about your music that you're like, we're giving you the full queer experience. Exactly, yeah. I think that it definitely like starts with that with like songs like girlfriend where it's just like literally do you want a girlfriend yeah <laughs> and then yeah I, I definitely explore it with like songs like your place which is like you know I kind of want to go to your house like are you going to be cool with that and <laughs> um miss out tonight which is obviously about like coming out and um being out which is something that you know most queer people have to at some point face. Um, so yeah, I, I, I never thought about it in that way because I think that since I do make music that I see as provocative and not in the sense of like provocative and overtly sexual, but I do know that it can sometimes 
it makes my grandma clutch her pearls. So <laughs> you're doing I definitely, what's that? I said you're doing something right if grandma's clutching the pearls. Oh, I hope so. I hope she's watching this um, <laughs> from her friend stuff. But mm -hmm. um, I, I for sure try to make music that is just very true to my own experience. And I'm having the full spectrum of queer experiences because this is my life. Um, so dating and love and all sorts of things come up. Yeah, and you said it's always been this way. Like from the get, you were making music that felt like 100% you. Yeah, I my first song I ever made was called Poppin'. And that was when I was in middle school. And it was literally just about how I had better shoes than everyone and how <laughs> nobody was as poppin' as me. And as I grew up, I started to write, you know, more songs that just really reflected what I was going through. I one time remixed Bills, Bills, Bills by Destiny's Child uh, as a diss song to Sally Mae because I couldn't pay my student loans. And so <laughs> I've always sort of made music that has been very close to what I was going through. Yeah, it's it's so beautiful that you're able to do that. I think a lot of people get scared to put their full truth out there like you. Mm -hmm. So what, because you growing up didn't have those queer black role models, um, what were some of the things that kept you going and kept you, yeah, also Mark says, please release pop and I do need to hear that. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you. I looked for it on my email the other day and realized that my middle school email had been completely wiped, so. Dang, so it's gone forever, but I do remember some of the lyrics. Oh my God, can we hear a sample? Literally, first line. My brother's walking in now. <laughs> first line. Walk through the door, all eyes on me, and fly's definition is what they all see. And I think like, Other girls, they be hating, but don't step to me. And I don't know where the rest goes, but it was definitely like, it was a song where I was just like, I just want everybody here to know I'm here. Hop in, I have the best shoes in the place. Yeah, period. <laughs> that's amazing. So embarrassing. And that's like what the song should be like, that if anyone's watching and they're like, I don't even know where to begin with writing a song. I feel like that's a beautiful place to start. It's like, well, what's happening right now? What's most important in your world right now? And if it's you having the best shoes in the room, like, that's all that mattered to me too at that point in time. And I think that that's like a, a tourist. Um, <laughs> I think that, oh, flip the light. I think that if um, you are making songs, like they need to be very much about like what's important to you at that point in time. And you know, that's why I feel like some people write songs where they flex really hard and like talk about things that they don't actually have because maybe aspiring to that is most important. But um, just don't write songs that aren't real for you. You know, if you can see yourself in a blue lamb and that's what you want to write about, then go for it. But if you know that you're always going to be a Land Rover type girl, then <laughs> sing about that. Like nobody's going to, you know, I, I know that as a queer black musician, there is definitely a lane that I easily could fill and I easily could, you know, succumb to or shrink myself to. But I also know that that would be very dishonest for me. Um, and probably in the end, less fulfilling. And so um, be yourself, don't be a liar to yourself or to the world and just, just go hard at, at what you're actually passionate about. Totally. We have a question from a Ooh. view. When did you know you were an artist? Um, I knew... <clears throat> I always knew that I was a writer. I loved writing um, poems and like short stories growing up, but I don't think that I realized that I was an artist until I was in school. I had a songwriting, a lyrics class, or it was a performance class actually. Whoa, and what? what grade? This is college. Oh, um, this is my yeah oh. sophomore year of college, and I I had a performance class and. I had written a song for a vocalist to sing and we ended up tanking the project because the vocalist couldn't get the timing right. She messed up some of the lyrics, was pitchy here and there. And it was just like a whole thing. And then um, my professor at the end of the performance was like, stopped the show and was like, who wrote this? And she 
I'm sitting in the audience because I'm like, my work here is done. I wrote the song, like, give me the grade. Who's, who wrote this? And so everybody looks to me because they knew I wrote it. And I was like, what? And so she comes up, she goes, sing the song how it was supposed to be sang. And so I sing it in front of all these parents and students and other teachers. And she still gave me a bad grade, but she was like, if that's the way that it was supposed to be sang, why didn't you sing it? And I was like, because I'm not a vocal, I'm not a vocalist. I was ashamed of my voice. I was afraid people would hate my voice. And I had somewhat, something I've always been a bit insecure about, but I knew I wanted to work in music and be a writer. And from there, she was like, if you would have sang it, like you probably would have gotten a better grade. But I have to give you the grade that you got because that's the way you presented the project. And I was pissed. Uh I was yeah. so angry because I'm like, I love this song. I know exactly what my vision was for it. And that's when I was like, I should just be an artist. Like, I already know what I want out of it. I know who it's for. I know what it's meant to be. And so I just need to get used to my voice. And that's what I did. Yeah, I love that. I love that it was like almost out of necessity, too, that you became an artist. Yeah, it was. It really was. Because, I mean, I had this straight girl singing this song that was definitely about this girl I had a crush on. And, like, <laughs> I changed all the pronouns for her and stuff. And it just, like, didn't even really work. And I was like, this is stupid. Why am I, again, shrinking myself to try and fill someone else's lane? Like, uh, my friend Maddie has a really good saying that I've sort of adopted. And she's always like, if you stay in your lane, there will never be traffic. And Ooh. isn't that so like, yes, I love um, so do I and I have like tattooed it across my heart of just like, got to stay in my lane. If I as soon as I try to do something that is not meant for me, like that's when I start to feel like, I don't know what I'm doing. It should be like riding a bike, like, gotta stay in my lane. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So what do you think younger you would have thought about all of this? I think that younger me would be like, yeah, of course. <laughs> I, you know, I think younger me is probably, probably would be like, why haven't you made it further? Why did it take you so long? <laughs> <laughs> Damn, little you. Yeah. She is, she's very hard. I mean, she wrote Poppin'. Like, younger me was always like, you're that girl. Go be that girl. Um, and I think as I got older, I got more nervous and insecure and you start to see people who are also good at the same thing you do and it can it can make you feel less than you know you start to get all those feelings of doubt and thoughts of like oh I'm not good enough or what do you think that you're going to be an artist like you listen to my voice my stepmom you sound like a 12 year old still and I'm like I know <laughs> I'm trying <laughs> um but I think younger me would be like yeah of course you stuck to it a true Taurus, um, <laughs> very stubborn, not going to give up. And of course, um, because I stuck to it, I think uh, growing up, I always knew that if I put my mind to something, like I could be great at it. Um, so she's probably looking at me now like, what, you, you need to be further, like <laughs> pick up I'll the pace, hustle. <laughs> I love that. It's so you started this project at the beginning of quarantine, right? Mm -hmm. Making all these visuals. What are some of your ways you take care of yourself as an artist when you're not making music? Because I feel like rest is a big part of creative process, too. Yeah, I think um, I can always do better at taking care of myself, first and foremost. Like uh, my dad always says, like, you have to pay yourself first. Nobody can eat. Nobody can get paid if you can't sign the checks. My dad's like really big on that. Like take care of yourself first. Um, and so something that I do practice pretty much regularly is I don't do anything I don't want to do ever. And Heck sometimes, yeah. sometimes that really pays off and other times it bites me in the ass um, but I can always like rest assured that like if I'm doing something, it's because like I'm choosing it, not because I have to, not because, you know, 
other people are telling me what is at stake if I don't, it's because I really, really want to. And I usually want to do what's best for me. Yeah. <laughs> That's beautiful because I feel as artists and sometimes as queer artists, if you, if you feel you're not getting as many opportunities, like it feels like you have to kind of sign up for everything because what oh, if yeah. one doesn't come around next, you know? Totally. Yeah, it can definitely feel like that. Um, and that's like a real thing because there aren't a lot of things for us, but there are more that are popping up. And also like, I feel like pigeonholing yourself as just a queer artist is sometimes where that, that feeling of scarcity comes from. Um, because yeah, you are a queer artist and most queer things are going to love you naturally because you know, you're putting on for queer people, which is awesome. Like we're a pretty inclusive group, thankfully. Mm -hmm. um, but, but, don't pigeonhole yourself to that. There's probably a lot more out there. There's probably way more opportunity than, you know, just that one box that you check. Totally. Yeah. How do you strike the balance? That's something I have trouble with as a queer artist, because I still feel like we haven't reached awesome queer representation um, <laughs> at all. <laughs> no. And so I do like to be very out and loud and proud to be that for someone. So mm -hmm. how do you strike the balance? of being out and proud but not making being gay your whole personality which I have, a, I have trouble with personally yeah um I mean for one I I again like I think that if you are out and proud and that's the thing that you're passionate about and like that is a huge part of your personality then be that and like be unabashed in it like don't be ashamed of it or try to draw back to fit anybody's mold honestly the world is going to have to come around to the fact that there are queer people that, you know, do pop music, indie music, R&B, rap, whatever, as good as the next person, because it's just the most asinine fact ever. Like, it <laughs> should just be accepted. Um, but I think that stri striking the balance that you mentioned um, is just about for me, making music for everybody. I think that I realized that my mission was to try and break down doors and try and make some noise for gay black girls specifically. But what I learned along the way is that gay men really like my music and straight men really like my music and straight girls really like my music. And it's because, like I said, like, I mean, I'm just a person, like I'm literally just, I'm the same as an Ariana or Billy or Miley or whomever, Girl in Red, all of them, all of us are the same. We just have these little things that make us a little bit different, but we're all pop stars. We're all pop artists. Um, and so don't let it hold you back, but at the same time, like wear your flag proud. Right, totally. It's the same thing that like artists like, uh, the temptations had to go through like looking back or like Beyonce had to go through that with Destiny's Child you know for it's tough because like sometimes you have to start off as a black artist at Rhythm or Urban Radio before you can cross over but so long as you're steadfast and persistent like eventually some open-minded people catch when wind of it and they begin to be your champions you know and sort of allies and advocates across other demographics for you but I think that artists like that stay very true to who they are that makes perfect sense like you might have to start out in your niche but if, if you keep going at it keep going yeah and hope that somebody ahead of you will make it easier for you yes totally I know you're doing that for people for sure. And you got to meet some of the people we work with, which is so yeah. beautiful. Love them. I'm actually fans of some of them. Oh my God, amazing. Yeah. Their hard work, for those watching that don't know, Sienna came and worked with 10 of our queer youth that are cooking up an album right now, written entirely by them. Very fun. Um, oh, amazing. What do you want to say to the pop stars of tomorrow, the queer youth watching? Um, I want to say, First and foremost, have fun. I was going to say be you, but ugh, I saw that on a license plate recently, and I was like, <laughs> people got to stop saying that. <laughs> Who else are you going to be? Um, <laughs> right. um, but
but yeah, have fun. Be true to yourself. I think that that's like better, a better way of putting that. Just be very true to who you are and don't be afraid to ruffle some feathers or make your grandma or my grandma clutch her pearls. Like do that. <laughs> Aim for that sometimes. Uh, yeah. We're aiming to make your grandma. Yeah. Single. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> She's just, yeah, no, my virgin ears. I'm I know. Gonna cut it out. Yeah. <laughs> it's cra it is hard, though, to, like, write a sexy song and then be like, my parents are going to hear this. Oh, okay. my gosh. Like yeah, I mean, my mom was at my release event, and I the first thing, I get on a mic, and the first sentence, I drop an F-bomb. And I'm like, and I stared her in the eyes as I said it because I was scanning <laughs> the room. And accidentally, like, just as... I, my eyes aligned with her was also the same exact moment of the sentence that fuck needed to be in it. And I was just like, of course. I was like, I'm so sorry, mom. But there it is. I'm there glad we kicked it off that way, too. So I'm like, now for the rest of the night, I don't need to feel bad about anything. Um, right? You broke the, you broke that boundary. Broke the ice, exactly. But yeah, but I think um, queer folks just got to keep keep going break break down the doors like just make a lot of noise usually people listen yeah well it's really encouraging when they have someone like you to look to as an example and that's my hope for the music industry is just more diversity more different sized people honestly agreed agreed like, nice to be yeah and different shades of black different shades yeah. of people of color you know um, and like, let's ask ourselves, like, why hasn't this happened yet? It's not because the talent's not there. Um, oh, yeah. Angelina, one, Angelina Jolie once told this story about how she took a trip to East Africa and did like an acting camp with some women in a school. And she, I think, I think she described it as like her mom, don't quote me on this, like a moment where she realized her privilege um, where she just was like, I am not a better actress than a lot of the people that, you know, that she was around in that moment. Literally the only difference is her access. Um, yeah. And like, that's, that's it. Like, there's not a lack of talent amongst queer people. There's not a lack of drive. There's is a lack of. Yeah, totally lack of opportunity. Yeah. And that's good to keep in mind for, and I think that's something we try to do in our workshops, like at the Future Perfect Records that you came to. It's like, none of us is like better than the other. We all have, we all have something to learn from one another. Mm -hmm. And contribute, yeah. Which is beautiful. So one more question for you. Yeah. Fun. Um, or I'm having fun at least. Um, <laughs> what is I'm your vision? Of okay, good. What is your vision of a perfect future? Because we are the future perfect project after all. We are future perfect. Perfect future. Um, first and foremost, it is one where the water is clean and the air is clean. And hopefully, you know, we're not living under a mountain of trash and like the earth, like half of California doesn't burn down in the next, what is it? They give us like 10 years now. Um, so first yeah. and foremost an environmentally like stable and healthy and safe place. Um, and then beyond that, just all of the things that I think would fall in succession after that, just a healthy earth, healthy like socioeconomic landscape and uh, environment. And I don't know, I just think that like with more love, which just like sounds so corny and is like the thing that everybody says, but I do believe that if, you know, there is more love and kindness that like a lot of the things can get fixed. It'll, it'll be a better place for a lot more of us. A hundred percent. It's only corny because everybody says it and everybody says it because it's true. So it's everybody not. Everybody knows it, right? It's like, I get yeah. it. I get it. Like you won't be like all love and sunshine and rainbows and shit, but like love and sunshine and rainbows are like exactly what we need. Yeah. <laughs> We need, we need rainbows, we need beach butts, we need yeah, exactly. long distance anthems, we need queer sex anthems, we need it all. Yes. Fire. You're giving us, and we're I'm so grateful. To, we love trying it. to give you a little bit of that, a little bit of my world. Yeah, so everybody, 
please, please, please check out Sienna's work, the new record, the new visual. Sienna, thank you so much for your time. This is so fun. Thank you. I had so much fun. Stickers in the should mail. I, no. Should I say something in here? Or just Oh, yeah, because I haven't sent them. And it's not because I don't want to send them. It's because I haven't. I haven't sent anything. No, no, no. I'm wondering if you got my stickers I sent you. Oh, no. Did they get lost in the mail? I didn't get anything from you. Oh, my God. Well, then we both have a letter to send each other. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. I, you sent them to Atlanta? Mm-hmm. No. The USPS doesn't want us to be friends, and it's rude. Yeah. Well, I still haven't sent mine, but now that I know, I'll send them UPS. <laughs> Well, save the USPS, too. Yeah, you're right. Low-key save the postal system. Yeah. All right. We'll, do, we'll figure out how we're mailing this offline, but thank All you right. so much. You can totally put whatever in the chat. I just wanted to let people know that this is my handle. Maybe if you can pin it afterwards, but either way. Yeah, totally. We will send them your way. We're going to post this on our page, too. Bye. Thank you for your time. Thanks for having me. And come hang out. All right. Bye. Bye.